Shalom. I'm going to start by saying Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Alright, call Loyim Yahweh Barashim Yahweh Shai, giving double honors to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to every brother preaching the truth throughout the four corners of the earth with truth and sincerity, all right? All right, this is Brother Shamaria of the Indiana camp coming at you with another lesson. All right, and this lesson is going to be about the Watchmen's, man, the Watchers, all right? Um, I was uh, thinking about a movie I had seen in the past, and when the name of the movie was Noah, all right? And I was going over, you know, um, that I was going over scriptures to cut the fallen angels and how that fallen angels is not those giant, you know, those giants that walked upon the earth, all right, uh, uh, as depicted in the book, I mean, in the movie Noah, all right, and they called those uh, those rock monsters, those giants, they called them watchers, all right, and I wanted to just get some precepts and, you know, uh, pull out the correct edification on who the watchers are and who the watchmen are, all right. Uh... Let's uh, get the original slot here. Um, it's in the book of, um, I believe it's in the book of Numbers. <laughs> slot here. I think it's Numbers, the 10th chapter. In like 6. Okay. All right, number six and nine. All right, now in the in the ancient world, we had watchmen on top of our towers. All right, in the ancient world, we had towers. All right, high walls to uh, to see the danger coming. All right, we had men upon those walls. All right, the gatekeepers, the ones that sit at the gate and in the wall. All right, um, those men would look out. All right, in the distance of the land, and they would see. The danger coming from within. I mean, from uh, the danger coming from without, coming towards you. Okay, and then they would what? They would sound an alarm, and the alarm in the ancient world was the trumpets. All right, so they would blow the trumpets and sound the alarm, so that the people, all right, so would know, and they, you know, would uh, gather together or evacuate or whatever the protocol was. They would, they would, the people would know and safeguard their homes, and the soldiers would get ready. For battle the ambushes all right they come you know basically the point that i'm making is that the uh the watchers the watchmen they in the ancient world it was figure it, it wasn't figuratively it was it was literally they were literally watch for for uh, evaders coming towards the uh the town or city all right now this is the scripture this is uh numbers chapter 10 verse 9 yeah 10 and 9 it says, if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, all right, then ye blow an, tr an alarm, then ye blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. All right, the same, I'm just getting it, actually the whole, the whole uh, beginning of this chapter to talk about the trumpet, all right, but I'm just getting the point, and that's the point, all right, when we go to war, now, now it's spiritual. It's not fit. It's not literal anymore. Now it's spiritual. It says when you, uh, if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you. All right, now our enemy took us out of our land. All right, now we're going to war in the land of our enemies that oppress us. All right, now how are we going to war? Because we we damn sure can't beat the our oppressors. All right, and our oppressor is the so-called white man. All right, starting with the so-called white man, it's all the heathen nations, plus two thirds of our own people. But it's starting all with the so-called white man. All right, because why? Because he's on top of the world right now. All right, but now we're going to war with this with this devil. All right, how are we going to war spiritually, man? All right, the Lord said I will consume them with the spirit of my mouth, and He's using His prophets as mouthpieces to do that, just like He did in Moses. All right. Or Jeremiah or Isaiah, we're the prophets coming back in, in in this time in the latter days to what to go to war with our oppressors. All right, it says what after that it says then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets and ye shall be remembered before the Lord. All right, how uh, how are we blowing that alarm now? All right, let me get I'm gonna get the scripture after I'm done with this. We're blowing an alarm. Remember that 
For blow, uh, it says, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and he shall save you from your enemies. Now, how are we blowing that alarm? How are we um, blowing that alarm with the trumpet? It's figurative. It's figuratively now. This is how we are uh, blowing an alarm with the trumpet, and our Lord is going to remember us when we do it. And he's going to deliver us from our enemies. Isaiah 58 and 1. It says, cry, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thine voice like a trumpet. All right, so our voice is the modern day trumpet. All right. We're supposed to cry aloud as, as if we're blowing a trumpet. All right. It says, show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. All right, so we're sounding the alarm. Telling you the enemy cometh, the enemy cometh. All right, the enemy is uh that the, the ultimate destruction. All right, in the day of the Lord, the day of Jacob's trouble. All right, the terrible day, great and terrible day. All right, so we see the danger coming. All right, so we're 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 about to go to war, you know, physically and not spiritually. It's it's spiritual right now, but we're about to go to war, and we're telling our people, hey, we're, this is the alarm. We're sounding the alarm. We're we're uh we're blowing the trumpets with our voice. Sounded the alarm telling you the prophecies, all right? Telling you to get right. But if you don't get right, then the opposite is going to happen. The Lord is not going to remember you, all right? And he will not deliver you from your enemies. All right, so that's that's the main duty of a watchman, all right? So basically, the watchmen are the prophets, all right? The ones that sit upon a wall and sit up, and I'm going to get that, all right? I'm going to sit upon the wall, I'm going to get proof. Uh, I don't remember what chapter it is, but I'll, I'll get it. It's two. Salakia. Alright, um Habakkuk two and one. Habakkuk chapter two verse one. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he shall say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he that he, that he may run that readeth it. Alright? Back to verse one. It says, I stand upon I will stand upon my watch. That's a watchman. Alright, like I made the uh, the analogy back in the ancient world, man. They stood upon the tower upon their watch. Alright? With probably a telescope, you know. But it wasn't uh uh uh, Salakia, it, it probably stood upon that watch with a telescope, probably, you know, watching for danger. All right, that's what uh, Habakkuk is saying. I will stand upon my watch, just like the watchman is in the ancient world, like I pulled for you in the book of uh, Numbers. It says, I will stand upon my watch, I will set me upon the tower, I will watch to see what he shall say unto me. All right, so we're supposed to be watching for the prophecies. All right, said, so after the Lord said what he had to say to Habakkuk. What did Habakkuk say? It says, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. It says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables. All right, so write the vision, which is what the prophecies, all right? Write the vision, the things that's going to happen in a lot of times and make it plain upon tables that he may run and read of it. My name's mean run. I mean, uh, uh, let's go into that word run. Run to run to run us swiftly. To drive away from cost to run away. It says, uh, <laughs> Salakia. To run for whatever reason, especially to the rush, break down, divide, speedily, footman guard, bring hastily to run away through, stretch out. All right, basically, that run means, uh, hold fast to it, man. All right. He that, he that run may read, uh, this, 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 this truth is supposed to be a race. All right, this this truth is likened to a race. It's in, it's likened to a marathon. We gotta finish our course. We gotta hold the truth until the Lord, either the Lord deliver us or until we die. All right, and that's the race. So him that run that read of it, we supposed to hold true to this word. That's that's uh that's what it that's what it means when it says he may run that read of it. All right, we shall run. We shall be hot for the Lord. We should be on fire. All right, it says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Through, though it tarry, wait for it, because it surely come. It will surely come. It will not tarry. All right. 
So it's saying that the, the, the prophecies are going to come to pass. All right. The prophecies are going to come to pass on its appointed time. All right. But at the end, it, shall, it says uh, the vision is yet for an appointed time. So although it may seem like nothing's happening, the vision is going to come. The, the prophecies are going to come. It says, uh, but at the end, it shall speak. All right. It shall happen. It shall unfold. It shall be manifest and not lie. Though it tarry, though it wait. All right. Tarry means to wait. It says, though it tarry. The word Terry to linger, to wait, to delay. All right. So although it feels as though as, as though you feel as though it's going to, you know, it's delay. But wait for it. For, but wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. All right. Behold, the soul is lifted up. Means that right. And just all right. But that goes into something else. But let me get another uh, precept. Um, because he said. The vision is yet for an appointed time. Now, this is what the watchmen are going to be doing in today's time. All right. Oh, shit, my phone is on 12%. I have a uh, charger. It's a lot. Yeah, um... Put my phone on the charge. I'm on 12%, as you can see. Bear with me for two seconds. Okay, where was I? All right, yeah. I'm going to get second Ezra's. The ninth chapter. And then, um, first verse. Alright, this is 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, measure now the time diligently in itself. Alright, now when you measure something, you're seeing how long it is, alright? When you measure, either you're measuring in length and width, alright? But he's talking about measure the time. Alright, how close are we till the Lord comes back? How close are we until our Redeemer is coming to redeem his elect? measure the time all right and how do we measure the time through the prophecies through the visions that the prophets got in days of old in the days of old all right measure thou the time diligently in itself and when thou seest part of the signs pass all right part of the of the visions pass all right which i have told thee before all right what i which the lord have told thee through the prophets of the old through the prophets of old right it says then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he had made. All right. So, like I said, he said, measure now the time diligently, because after the after the um, the prophecies pass, after we see the mark of the beast start getting into, uh, after we see the mark of the beast getting implemented, all right, which is a prophecy. After we see martial law troops uh, are touching American soil, all right. After we see a uh, famine, of, uh, a famine of bread, and shortly after that, a famine of word, a famine of the word, hearing the words of the Lord, then we know that what? Verse two. Then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherewith the highest will begin to visit the world which he had made. That's how we know that it's it, that's the same time that the that the Lord was showing the prophets of old. All right. Verse three. Therefore, when thou shalt be seen. Thou shalt be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Then thou, uh, then shalt thou will understand. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. All right, now, like I said, the same thing I just said. And we started seeing what. Um, I was a brother. I'm put my phone on airplane mode real quick. All right, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High uh, spake of those things which the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Or like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. All right, so when we start seeing these prophecies come to pass, the end is going to be manifest. All right. And it says, even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders of power. All right, this is going to something else. But 
basically the watchman is going to what do everything to measure the time until um until the lord comes back now in between in between the time of us measuring the time right so the uh, the duration until the lord comes back we're going to be doing what all right this is what we're going to be doing this is psalms 1 and 15. All right. This is uh Psalms 1 and 15. My son, walk not thou in the way of them that reframe thine foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. All right. It's talking about the people all of our enemies that go off from the Lord, man. Uh uh, uh mostly mainly uh two thirds of our brothers and sisters, man. Two thirds of Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man, they they walk from the path, which is the path of the watchman, the prophets, a servant of the Lord. They walk from that path. They walk from that path and divert their feet, all right, to do evil. Verse seventeen. Surely in vain the net is spared in the sight of thine of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. All right, saying uh, the scripture says. Those who sin are enemies into their own lives. All right. All right. So it's, it says, surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. So they, they everything they're doing, they're doing is in vain, man. Verse 19. It says, so are the ways of everyone that is greedy in the gain, greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of their own thereof. All right. Now, like I said, it, those who are sin. Those who do, those who sin are sinners into their own enemies into their own life. Now this is the point that I wanted to get. I meant to get twenty so I can start it up. That that didn't have anything to do with what I was what I was getting. But uh, verse twenty says, "Wisdom crieth out; she uttereth her voice in the streets. She she crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates in the city. She uttereth her words, saying, This is what we're going to be doing until the Lord comes back, until we can measure the time diligently.'" When the, when, the, when the Lord will start to visit the earth which he had made. Until those prophecies start coming to pass rapidly. All right, because it's uh, in, the, in, the, in the Apocrypha, it says that the prophecies are not going to slack. Like a, like a woman's, um, like, a, like the woman at Trevelith. All right, it says the prophecies, they're not going to slack. Just like her pains are not going to slack. So after we start seeing these prophecies, all right, we're going to, all right, you know, we're going to do what's necessary. But until then... We're watching for them. We're the watchmen, man. We're watching and we're warning the people. I'm going to get that next. It says, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And you scorn as delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. This is what we're sitting on the highways and byways. All right. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you and make known my words unto you. All right. The Lord, the Lord's words are being made known unto all of these scoffers and all of these, uh, these, these Gentiles, these heathens. And these Gentiles, these foreigners, these Israelite foreigners, man, they've been made known to them through the words of the, through the mouth of the prophet. He says, because I have called and ye have refused and stretched out my hand and no man regardeth. All right. But ye have said not all my counsel and with none of my reproof. So you don't want to be corrected by the watchman. All right. Well, the watchman is telling you, hey, um, uh, no, uh, uh, Russia has missiles that can that can reach America. It's, it's getting close. All right, uh, America is, is is up there in the heavens making Star Wars programs. Man, it's getting close. All right, these prophecies coming to pass. Man, with blood moons. All right, uh, as, as, as eclipses. You know, the prophecies are coming to pass. There's earthquakes in diverse places, man. You know, there's uproars of the. There's beginning to be uh, small uproars of the people. All right, they they they're trying their best to keep it under wraps, but uh, underground news always finds a way to bring it out. This is what we're telling these people, but they don't want to hearken, man. They're not going to hearken. Okay, but let me get uh, Ezekiel because we have to go. The watchmen have to go out there and let these people know what they're doing. All right, they have to, the Lord has to have it that way, so they won't have an excuse. All right. And this is what the true watchmen are doing.
Huh. I started at 17. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Like I said, the words of the Lord are being made known unto these people. All right. It said, go out there. All right. And give these people warning from me, from the Lord, from Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh which is the true name of the, what the world calls God and what the true name is what the world calls Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ being Yahweh Shai and God being Yahweh. All right. Verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. All right, and that's plain. If you don't go out there and warn the wicked, all right, then the wicked going to die, but the Lord going to require the wicked's blood at your hand because you didn't go out there and tell him. All right, now verse 19, it says, Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he return not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way and he shall and he shall die in his iniquity but thou hast delivered thy soul because why you told him and he he refused you he, he didn't he didn't um he he said it not the lord's counsel it says again when again when a righteous man doth turn from his, his righteousness and commit iniquity and i lay a stumbling block before him he shall die because thou hast not given him warning, and he shall die in his sin and his righteousness. And his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. It's saying the same thing. And nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he warned, because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thine soul, and the hand of the Lord was there upon me and he said unto me arise go forth into the plain all right and that was the point that's why we're out there man that's why we're out there telling you people because we don't want the blood we're washing the blood off of our hands all right and in the same thing we're also condemning the wicked now i want to get one more scripture this is uh because i want to get Isaiah 62 and 6, I have set watchmen upon my walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. All right, so we're, we're testifying our Savior openly, day and night, man. When it says day and night, we're not literally on the highways and the byways every day and every night, but we're on a YouTube channel. We're on the, we're in the internet every day and every night that's that psalms 19 all right uh the the furtherment make if it show if it's handy his handiwork all right that's that psalm 19 he's never held that uh from day into day and night into night uh, uh, utter a speech roughly paraphrasing all right so we have watching that's never gonna stop holding that piece man all right those those are things that the watchmen are going to be doing and the watchmen are the prophets of the lord read to you that in Habakkuk, the second chapter. All right, so with that, I'm going to just close it up. All right, I hope this video is edifying to the elect and the elect only. All right, and I'll say it. Shalom until next time, brothers. Habatah.